This is the second of two videos talking about sample problems from section 2.5 from OpenStax Calculus Volume 2. This video will focus on problems involving the physical concept of work. So in this case, we're just reviewing the basic concept of work, which is when we have a constant force, work is equal to force times distance. So in this case, we've got a constant force of 12 pounds and we're moving a chair from 0.9 to, uh, to 1.1, which is a distance of 0.2. So we've got 12 pounds multiplied by the distance that we moved, which is 1.1 minus 0.9. So that's 12 pounds times 0.2 feet. We multiply those together, we get 2.4 foot pounds. And so foot pounds is one of the different units for that we use for force when we're using the um, American pounds and feet, those kinds of units. Uh, foot pounds is a common unit that you'll see. All right, this time we have a child weighing 20 kilograms being lifted from the ground to a height of two meters. So this one is involving metric units and it's also a force applied against gravity. So what we need to do is again, understand that this is a constant force. So it's force times distance, but what is the force that's being exerted here? The weight of the child is 20 kilograms and force is mass times acceleration. So in this case, the mass of the child is 20 kilograms and the acceleration, since we're in metric units, is 9.8 meters per second squared. So this is 20 kilograms times 9.8 and then multiplied by uh, two meters. So the work here is 20 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times the distance, which is two meters. And when we multiply all that together, we get 392 and the units here are joules. So that J there stands for joules. Remember that one Newton is one kilogram times meters per second squared. One joule is one Newton times one meter, also known as one kilogram meters squared per second squared. So understanding that those conversions is helpful, especially when we're dealing with metric units. Okay, so now we get into where the calculus comes into play. So this is a variable force. It's no longer a constant force. The force depends on the value of x and we're moving from x equals zero to x equals one. So in this case, the work is the integral from a to b of my variable force over my integral. So in this case, I'm integrating from zero to one. My function for my force is three x squared newtons. And so we're just integrating three x squared, which is an easy integral is x cubed, plug in one, plug in zero and we get one, and again, the units here would be joules. Now, these next couple of problems involve springs. So when we have a spring, what we're using is something called Hooke's Law. So Hooke's Law applies just to springs, right? So this isn't a general thing that's gonna apply outside of this uh, situation, but Hooke's Law states that F of X, the force, is some constant K times X. And the constant K is going to depend on the spring. So this first sentence that tells us it takes a force of 12 newtons to stretch the spring to seven meters is helping us figure out what K is. So this is F of two. So that's where the equilibrium length comes in. So it's a little bit complicated. Let's try to understand what's going on. If this is a wall and we've got the spring sort of attached to the wall, and then we've got sort of the end of the spring, which is some block. If this is equilibrium at x equals five, sorry, not x equals five, at just five meters. So in other words, this distance is five meters. And then we stretch the spring to seven meters. Then what we've done is we've gone from equilibrium, which is x equals zero, to x equals two, because we've gone two units to the right from our equilibrium. So equilibrium is always x equals zero. So when we're thinking about Hooke's law, the x there is zero when we're at equilibrium. And if we go stretch the spring out, x is gonna be positive. If we compress the string and move to the left in this example, then that would be x being negative. So in this case, what they're telling us is that f of two is 12, 12 newtons. So in this case, k is going to be, sorry, kx, when x is two, so k times two is 12, which means k is equal to six. All right, now the question is how much work is done to compress the string to a length of two meters? So again, work is gonna be the integral from a to b of my force with respect to x. 
Now, what I'm doing is I'm compressing the spring from equilibrium to x e to two meters length, which means I'm moving to x equals a negative three. I'm going from the equilibrium length of five, and I'm pushing the spring to the left so that I'm at x equals negative uh, negative three. So again, the, the situation would look like this. So I've stretched my uh, compressed my spring so that I'm only at a length of two meters. Remember, equilibrium was over here at x equals zero, where I had five meters length. And so if I'm going from five down to two, I'm moving three units to the left. So that's where that negative three is coming from. Now, k is six, so my force function is just six x. So the integral, when you actually get to do the integral, is an easy integral. It's just getting to the point and understanding what are the values of x, what's the value of k. Hopefully, I've done a good job of explaining that in this example. So antiderivative of 6x is 3x squared. We're going to plug in negative 3 and 0 and subtract in that order. So we get 3 times negative 3 squared minus 3 times 0 squared. 3 times negative 3 squared, that's 3 times 9, which is going to be 27. And in this case, that's going to be joules because we're doing work in metric units. Okay, one more example. So this time, the way that we're going to figure out the k, the spring constant, is because I'm telling you how much work it takes to stretch the spring to 1.1 meters. So it's a one meter long spring. So again, if we're thinking about this in terms of pictures, at equilibrium, the spring is one meter long. So this is equilibrium. Which means this is x equals zero. So now I'm telling you that if you stretch this spring to 1.1 meters, what you've done is you've moved yourself to x equals 0 0.1, because the length of the spring in this case is 1.1 meters. One meter corresponds to x equals 0, so if I want to go to 1.1 meters, then I'm going to x equals 0 0.1. So that first sentence there is telling you that the work that you're doing in integrating from 0 to, 1, to uh, 0 0.1 of your force function, which is kx, that works out to be 10 joules. Now we don't know what k is, but we can use this equation to solve for k. The only unknown variable in that equation is k. So we integrate kx, k is a constant, we don't know what it is yet, but it's a constant. So we get 1 half kx squared, evaluated from 0 to 0 0.1, and we know that that has to work out to be 10. So we plug in 0.1 and 0, we get 1 half k, 0.1 squared, minus 1 half k times 0 squared, and we know that equals 10, that's a 0. So 1 half of 0.1 squared is 0 0.005, so we get 0 0.005k equals 10, divide both sides by 0 0.005, and we get k is 2000. So that's how we figured out k using that first sentence. Now the question is, how much additional work is required to stretch the spring to 1.2 meters? So that would be the work to take us from x equals 0 0.1 to x equals 0.2. We're already at x equals 0 0.1. We want to go another 0.1 unit to the right. We want to go to x equals 0 0.2. So how much work will that take? Well, again, it's going to be the integral of kx dx, but now we know what k is. This is 2000x. So we take the antiderivative of 2000x, that's going to be 1000x squared, plug in 0.2, plug in 0.1 and subtract, so we get 1000 times 0.2 squared minus 0.1 squared, that's going to work out to be 30 joules. So with the spring problems, the key thing that you want to do is figure out what k is based on the information in the problem. In the previous problem, we were given the force that it took to extend or compress the spring, and we just set our force equal to that amount of force that we were given and solve for k. This one was a little bit trickier because they gave us the work that was required to stretch or compress the spring. But again, we solve for k and then use that value of k to answer our question. So I hope this helps you understand how these work integral problems uh, happen to work out, and um, I'll see you for the next video.